Stephanie Isaacson was born on August 12, 1974, in Lincoln, Nebraska. However, her father John's military career resulted in her family moving to several different locations throughout her early life. In 1985, John was assigned to Nellis Air Force Base, and the family moved to Las Vegas, Nevada. Stephanie and her father were very close and spent a lot of time together due to their many shared interests. They both loved spending time outdoors. The pair enjoyed going hunting, boating, and camping together, and they rode both horses and motorcycles. They both received their scuba diving certification at Lake Mead. Stephanie's bond with her father was so close that when her parents divorced, she decided to live primarily with him, while her younger sister primarily stayed with their mother. Stephanie still regularly saw her mother and sister and had a good relationship with them. John Isaacson worked nights as a staff sergeant at the Air Force Base, so he did not see his 14-year-old daughter leave their apartment for school on June 1, 1989. At that time, he and Stephanie were less than a month away from moving to Spain for his next Air Force assignment. Stephanie's normal routine was to leave around 6.30 in the morning, walking to El Dorado High School via a shortcut through an empty desert field. That morning, she never arrived at school. The school did not call her father when she did not report to class. Her choir teacher was concerned when Stephanie did not eat lunch with her friends in her classroom that day. The group always spent their lunch break together and referred to themselves as the little team. The teacher was surprised to not see Stephanie that day, as it was unusual for her to miss school. Stephanie's father, John, grew concerned when his daughter did not arrive home from school that afternoon at her normal time. He called the school and finally learned that she had never made it to school that day. John then began calling some of Stephanie's friends, none of whom had any idea where she was. John's next call was to the police to report Stephanie missing. John then went to the Air Force Base with some of his friends to pick up horses from the base's stables. They rode the horses around the small area of desert between the high school and the apartment that Stephanie could have walked through that day. During their search, one of John's friends spotted a trail of school books in a lot half a mile from the apartment building where the Isaacsons lived. John confirmed that the books belonged to his daughter, and they notified authorities of what they had found. A massive air and ground search was carried out in the area. Around 11 o'clock that night, the search came to an end. Stephanie's body was discovered approximately 25 yards off of a path she would walk to and from school. A police dog found her amongst the brush, hidden under a discarded piece of orange carpet. When Stephanie's body was found, the black shirt she had been wearing had been pulled up, and her jeans had been pulled down. Her hair was in disarray, and her left breast had been mutilated. During her autopsy, it was determined that she had been sexually assaulted. It appeared that Stephanie had been abruptly attacked by surprise as she walked to school before being dragged off the path, leaving behind the trail of her books and other belongings. Her autopsy found that she had suffered severe blunt force trauma injuries and had died as the result of strangulation. Two memorial services were held for Stephanie, one in Las Vegas and one in Nebraska where she was buried. Police followed up on what few potential leads they had early on in the investigation. Local residents reported seeing a vehicle parked in the area the day of Stephanie's murder, but they provided different descriptions of what it looked like. As years went on without an arrest, investigators traveled all over the United States to follow up on potential leads and possible suspects. In 1998, the evidence from Stephanie's case was re-examined in hopes of locating DNA evidence. The effort was unsuccessful. In 2007, using more advanced technology, the forensic laboratory was able to identify DNA in semen found on the shirt Stephanie had been wearing at the time of her murder. Despite ongoing advances in forensic science, a match to the DNA could not be found in the ensuing years. In 2020, a $5,000 donation was made to Othram, a Texas-based laboratory 
specializing in advanced DNA technology. The donation was made to help solve a cold case, with the donor specifying that the case in question must be one from the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department. Stephanie's case was selected by the department's cold case unit, not only because of her young age at the time of her murder and the brutality of the crime, but also because there was very little DNA evidence available for analysis, meaning investigators had to rely on Othram's advanced techniques to process the small sample. Othram used their forensic-grade genome sequencing to create a genealogical profile from the provided sample. Genealogists began constructing a family tree and provided leads to the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department. From there, the department identified two potential suspects. A DNA profile was on file for one of them, and in 2021, comparison of it to the sample from Stephanie's shirt showed that he was a match. In identifying the contributor of the DNA, Othram set the record for the smallest amount of DNA used to build a genealogical profile and solve a case. Police in Las Vegas had provided them with 0.12 nanograms of DNA, or approximately 15 human cells. For comparison, commercial DNA sites like Ancestry.com or 23andMe use at least 750 nanograms of DNA to construct their customers' DNA profiles. The smallest amount of DNA Othram had previously been able to use was in August of 2020, when they used one-fifth of a nanogram, or approximately 20 cells, to identify Rodney Johnson, previously only known as the Lake Stickney John Doe. On July 21st, 2021, 32 years after Stephanie was killed, authorities announced that her killer had been identified as Darren Roy Marchand. Unfortunately, he could not be arrested or tried for Stephanie's murder. The DNA sample on file that had confirmed that he was a match to the DNA from the crime scene had been taken following his suicide in 1995. That son of a bitch got me twice, once when he killed my daughter and the other one when I didn't get the opportunity to look him in the eye. Stephanie's father, John, told the Las Vegas Review Journal after Marchand was identified. In March of 1986, when he was just 20 years old, Marchand had been charged with the murder of 24-year-old Nanette Vandenberg. Her nude body was found in the bathtub of her Las Vegas apartment. Marchand's fingerprints had been found near her body, and he had been with her at a casino just before her death. Marchand denied involvement in the murder, stating that he had left Nanette alive at her apartment before going home to go to sleep. The murder charge against Marchand did progress to a preliminary hearing, but the case was dismissed after two days of testimony, after it was ruled that the fingerprint evidence was not enough to charge him with Nanette's murder. After DNA tied Marchand to Stephanie's murder, authorities compared his DNA profile to DNA evidence from Nanette's murder and found it to be a match. Marchand got married in January of 1987, less than a year after Nanette was murdered. At the time of Stephanie's murder in June of 1989, he and his wife had a two-year-old daughter and were expecting a son. In January of 1989, Marchand was charged with five counts of open and gross lewdness. Each count was in relation to a different woman to whom Marchand publicly exposed himself. That April, Marchand pled guilty to one of the counts in exchange for the other four being dropped. He was awaiting sentencing when Stephanie was killed. In August, he was sentenced to a maximum of one year of probation, which he was released from after just nine months. Marchand and his wife divorced in 1990. He committed suicide in the Las Vegas area just weeks before his 30th birthday in 1995. When Marchand's identification was first announced, the individual who provided the funds for the testing in Stephanie's case was initially only identified as an anonymous donor. He was subsequently identified as entrepreneur and philanthropist Justin Wu. After moving to Las Vegas from Los Angeles, he established the nonprofit Vegas Helps. He contacted Othram about expanding his efforts to benefit the Las Vegas community by solving cold cases 
after taking a personal interest in advanced forensic DNA testing. In November of 2021, another donation from Mr. Wu led to the identification of Johnny Blake Peterson as the killer of 16-year-old Kim Bryant. Kim went missing on January 26, 1979. She had last been seen in the parking lot of a fast food restaurant near her high school. Her body was located a month later, and it was determined that her killer had sexually assaulted her. Othram tied Peterson to the murder using DNA taken from Kim's body. Just days later, Peterson was tied to another decades-old case. His DNA was also a match to DNA collected from the body of Diana Hansen. 22-year-old Diana was a college student who had returned home for winter break at the end of 1983. She went out for a run around 4.30 p.m. on December 30th and never returned home. Her body was later found on Spring Mountain Road, west of South Buffalo Drive in Las Vegas. She had been sexually assaulted. Peterson died in 1993, so he could not be charged with either of the murders. Mr. Wu has formed the Las Vegas Justice League to provide further support and funding to the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department. As of late 2021, the League is looking into assisting with at least eight other cold cases in the Las Vegas area. While the solving of Stephanie's case was appreciated by her family, it of course did not diminish the pain caused by her loss. It's good to have some closure, but there is no justice for Stephanie at all. Stephanie's mother wrote in a statement read at the press conference announcing Marchand's identification. We will never have complete closure, because nothing will ever bring my daughter back to us.